How come that person is using a swear word? How come that person is unclothed? And so that kind of area becomes an issue for challenge. Another issue is that people still haven't necessarily gotten the memo that all of us have that comics are valuable speech for readers of all ages. And so you still have concerns about the appropriateness of comics in the library environment. You still have concerns that comic books are in some capacity low value speech that doesn't have a place in, in the public library system. So here's a sampling of common reasons for why comics are banned and challenged. Profanity and offensive language is very common. Sexuality or nudity. Violence or horror. Drugs or alcohol. Politically, socially, or racially offensive material or offensive to religious beliefs. And the important question here, the essential question, is whether the viewpoints of a, sh of a few should dictate to the rest of the library's patrons and their children what they may read. The Common Book Legal Defense Fund upholds the core belief that the individual is the sole custodian and, and, and uh, guardian of their own intellectual development. The parent is the sole guardian of their children's intellectual development. If you don't want your kid reading Bone, if you don't want your kid reading Sandman, that's absolutely your right. If it's assigned to you in a school and it offends you, you can ask for an alternative assignment. What you can't do is attempt to get that book removed from the public library so no patron can use it. What you can't do is attempt to get that book removed so that the teacher can't assign the material. And so these are the values that the fund works very hard to uphold. And over the next moments, you'll see instances where challenges of the nature that I'm discussing have occurred. So the question we're all here for, right? So what comics are really banned? I mean, they must be some pretty awful stuff, right? Well, let's start with one that you wouldn't necessarily expect, Bone by Jeff Smith. In April of 2010, a Minnesota parent petitioned to remove the series from her son's school library. Ramona DeLay's son had just graduated the local D.A.R.E. anti-drug program, and her kid brought home a copy of Bone Volume 4, The Dragon Slayer, and was shocked, I say shocked, that the book depicted this character, Smiley Bone, smoking a cigar, or the fact that one of the humans in the series, Lucius Downs, owns a tavern, and there was a beer-selling competition between Lucius and Phony Bone that provides a significant source of humor and plot points in the course of The Dragon Slayer. And so this created national attention, and got the attention of both the fund and Jeff Smith, who wrote a letter to the library explaining you know, the, the value of Bone and kind of decrying the ban attempt, that if this lady doesn't want her kid to read it, that's absolutely her right as a parent, but why deprive other kids this modern classic that is translated all over the world and has brought so much learning and so much joy to so many people? And so the letter from uh, Smith was read at the community's hearing, the challenge was ultimately rejected by a 10 to 1 vote. So there, you know, is one of your first examples of the challenge to the ban. The book was brought as a challenge. The challenge did receive media attention, but ultimately, saner has prevailed and the book was allowed to stay in the library. Nudity is a constant issue that we're going to see uh, brought up in the course of, um, of, of why people ban comics. And In the Night Kitchen by Maurice Sendak is a frequently challenged book that has received a variety of attentions and challenges and problems because it depicts this little boy having a naked dream running through the kitchen. And Sendak has always enjoyed being a uh, kind of anti-authoritarian, um, you know, kind of needling the status quo person, and he definitely stands for the intellectual freedom of kids, and he has a high opinion of kids, you know, own kind of sense of themselves and their development. And so when the Night Kitchen, in the Night Kitchen came out, the book uh, depicts this young boy, Mickey, running around naked, and uh, there's nothing, you know, dirty or sexual about it, but many librarians censored the book by you know, removing it or even painting diapers over the boy's uh, private parts. And uh, first the editor, Ursula Nordstrom, thought that, well, this is, you know, clever and kind of funny, but then she thought about it more and she wrote a letter saying that, I am indeed distressed to hear that in the year 1972 you burned a copy of a book because a person did toe to that extreme and burn it. We are distressed that you think it is not a book for elementary school children. I assume it's a little boy's nudity which bothers you, but it does not disturb children. I think young children will always react with the light to such a book as in the night kitchen, and they will react creatively and wholesomely. It is only adults who ever feel threatened by Sendak's work. And indeed, this is a thread that we see running through 
the entire culture of book censorship is that children oftentimes are their own best censors. I'm sure that parents here see that if a kid isn't ready for something, they tend to look away from it. That still is not an excuse for inappropriately giving kids stuff that they're not ready for, nor is it a reason the parents shouldn't be involved in what their kids are bringing home from the library or 